she brought an alabaster jar of perfume, and as she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. I've seen her before. She looks so familiar. Actually, a lot of people recognize her. Her life hasn't exactly been pure and spotless. I don't know her whole story, but many know her as the sinful woman. She's weeping, and now she's come into the room where Jesus and some others are reclining at the table. What is she doing? People are looking at her. Some confused, some irritated, some looking around hoping someone else will confront her and deal with the situation. She just collapsed behind Jesus, sobbing with tears running down her face. It's been a really long time since I've seen someone broken to a point quite like this. What happened to her? Why is she crying? I feel so bad for her. I'd approach her, but there's nothing that I can do for her that Jesus can't. He has a way with people. I've never met anyone like him before. He's so gentle that he brings a calm and a peace when he enters the room. Even when I hear or say his name, or even if I just think it, I'm comforted and know that everything's going to be fine. He's so gentle, yet there's an immense power that radiates from him. Like, he would totally go to battle for me. He would fight for me. Shoot, I wouldn't be surprised if he died just to save me. But I mean, I don't deserve that. There's something about his gentleness that empowers me to be courageous. And there's something about his power that enables me to let go. It's so mysterious. I don't fully know or understand him, but I trust him with my life. And the more I'm around him, the more he opens my eyes and my heart, teaching me truths, showing me his promises, revealing my purpose and who I am, and giving me more understanding of who he is so that I can know him better. Turns out, he already knows a lot about me, so I can spend my time and focus spending time with him, learning more about who he is. Everyone just looked at the woman, except Jesus. She's using her tears to wash Jesus' feet and then wiping his feet with her hair. I wonder what's going on inside of her heart. She hasn't stopped weeping since the moment I spotted her. She seemed heavy-hearted as she came in, hanging her head low. But now that she has collapsed at Jesus' feet, I sense relief. She's repeatedly kissing his feet and just poured expensive perfume on them. What am I witnessing? People's eyes are really starting to widen, and now they're whispering. But Jesus, he turned and he looked at her, as though looking straight into her soul, and he smiled. In her brokenness, she smiled back, knowing that she was seen and that she was safe and that Jesus loved her unconditionally. He just said to her, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Bowing in humble surrender to Jesus, she then rose up, took a deep breath, and left. Everyone there could tell that something much deeper was going on much deeper than what we could see with our eyes. The sinful woman left claiming a peace that was so powerful that you could feel her freedom. She was no longer bound by the sinful chains that held her captive. She was saved. She was forgiven. She was made whole by Jesus' love. She was made new. And from that day on, she lived in Jesus' love, free from guilt and shame. People no longer identify her as the sinful woman. Now she is identified as the saved woman. 
The aroma of the expensive perfume filled the room even long after she had gone. I replayed the scene of what I had just witnessed over and over in my mind, and I watched as people began to gather their things and leave one by one. When the sinful woman first arrived at the house, I was surprised and at times shocked by her actions. Shamedly, I was actually a little embarrassed for her. I even judged her, wondering if she was making a scene to gain attention for herself. But as I continued to watch the scene unfold, I noticed Jesus and how he so lovingly received her just as she was. His love covered her in grace, his grace. I tried to learn from him, seeing life from his perspective, seeing people from his perspective. And as I remembered the woman, I saw a broken and brave person courageously making her way to Jesus, focusing only on him. She humbly claps at his feet fully aware of her sin and brokenness. Each tear that fell from her face represented a hurt, a pain, a wrong, a shame, guilt, sin. She surrendered them literally at Jesus' feet, knowing that he would know what to do with them. Her tears soaked into his skin as she wiped them off with her hair. And after kissing them, she then poured the perfume on them. The perfume was expensive. I see this as a representation of her life, humbly poured out on Jesus' feet. It's like I witnessed Jesus taking the sins and the burdens of the sinful woman's life in exchange for his love, which made her whole. Which makes sense then why we could all sense her freedom and the peace that she claimed from Jesus peeked into the room to see if everyone had gone, and everyone had, except Jesus. My heart started pounding as I decided whether or not to approach him. What would I, what would I even say? What would I do? I was utterly overwhelmed by everything he was and everything I was not. And then I heard his still small voice call to me, my child. felt faint. My breathing became more and more shallow as I approached him. My life flashed before my eyes as I recalled all of my flaws and sins, everything that I wasn't. The closer I got to Jesus, the more I experienced his gentleness, and I felt a calm as though I was home. It drew me in. The closer I got to Jesus, the more I experienced his power that radiated from him. Even though I knew that I was safe, I feared him and I fell face down at his feet. I wept in my brokenness. I apologized for the tears and tried to brush them off of his feet with my hands. But he put his hands on mine and said to me, please, those are mine. I want them all. I cried for what felt like an eternity until no more tears would fall. I found that the more of me that I surrendered at his feet, the more open I was for his love to cover me in his grace, soothing my brokenness and making me whole. I was beginning to see and understand the experience and transformation of the sinful woman to the saved woman. I am the sinful woman. But because of Jesus' unconditional love that wraps me in his grace and makes me whole, I am the saved woman. Jesus lifted my chin and looked into my eyes as if, if he was looking straight into my soul. He smiled at me. In my brokenness, I smiled back, knowing that I was safe, and that I was seen, and that Jesus loved me unconditionally. And then he said to me, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. I bowed my head and clung to his feet where my tears had fallen, and he had absorbed my flaws and sins. Then I rose up and smiled at Jesus. He smiled back, 
and taking a deep breath of new life into my lungs, I left. Something deep happened in my heart and is transforming me from the inside out. When I claim Jesus' peace and I walk in his love, I experience a freedom that I cannot explain. I am no longer bound by the sinful chains that held me captive. I am saved. I am forgiven. I am made whole by Jesus' love. I am made new. I am no longer identified by the sinful woman, but by the saved woman. I was changed after that day. Now whenever I see Jesus while out and about, I look at him and I smile. And somehow, he always knows when I am. And he turns to me and smiles. And then I continue on. I still make mistakes, and I still sin now and again. But praise Jesus that he has absorbed my sin so that I can walk 